I'm Dr. Ashegun Henry, and I'm a professor at MIT. Today, I want to tell you about something that I invented, something that can solve the most important problem in the history of mankind. This new technology is the result of three important technological breakthroughs that I pioneered. It's won awards, it's set world records. Uh, but before I get into it and tell you more, I actually want to start by framing the problem. So I want everyone to close their eyes and picture this. Imagine your doctor comes in and tells you that you have a rare and deadly disease. You're devastated. And even worse, while you're driving home, you hear on the radio that there's a new strain of this disease that's spread all around the world, all within the last 24 hours. So death is certain, not just for you, but for all of humanity. This is where we are today. The disease is climate change, and if we continue to do nothing, the Earth will eventually become uninhabitable for human beings, and we will likely go extinct. Now open your eyes, look around. We're not dead yet, and we actually know the cure. But climate change is like cancer. The earlier we treat it, the better our chances are for survival. But even then, it's not guaranteed. And also, just like cancer treatments, the cost of the cure may drive us into bankruptcy. The problem really starts with the way we make electricity, which today also makes CO2 and it has started to make our climate change. But it does not have to be this way. Why? Because there's a giant nuclear reactor out there in space. It's 300,000 times the size of Earth. And it's located at a nice, safe distance of 93 million miles away. And it provides all the energy we need to power modern society and feed 8 billion people. Solar panels, and wind turbines can turn this energy into electricity at scale. The only problem is that you only get the electricity when the sun is out or the wind is blowing. But we need electricity 24-7. So what's the solution? It's simple. Just store it. Stockpile enough electricity during the day when the sun is out so we can use solar power at night. And that's why I'm working on energy storage. Sounds easy. But if you want to solve the energy storage problem, we need new technology. And that new technology has got to have three critically important attributes. Number one, it's got to be cheap. And I'm not talking about half the cost of what it costs today. I'm talking about 10 times cheaper than what it is today. Number two, it's got to be reliable. When you pay your electricity bill, you're not just paying for energy. You actually pay for energy, but you also pay for reliability. Whatever we make, it cannot fail. It's always got to work. Why? Because somewhere, somebody's respirator depends on it. Number three, it's got to scale. And what do I mean by scale? I mean that the materials we use to make it have to be so accessible, so abundant, that the price won't skyrocket from all the new demand we're going to create by deploying all the storage we need. Now, the issue is we use a lot of energy. And for us to go fully renewable, we're going to need storage at the 100 terawatt hour scale. And I'm sure that unless you work in energy, if I say 100 terawatt hours, that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you. So let me give you some tangible examples. Today. The largest battery in the world is about a gigawatt hour. And it's the size of a football field. So 100 terawatt hours of storage means 100,000 batteries the size of a football field. But here's the critical thing. It's not just about the scale. It's about the timing. If we're going to decarbonize by 2050, that means we would have to not just start building, we would have to finish building 10 batteries the size of a football field every single day for the next 30 years straight. 
Think about the sheer mass of material we have to assemble. The Great Pyramid of Giza still stands as the heaviest building on earth at 5 million tons. 100 terawatt hours of storage by 2050 means we would have to assemble a stack of batteries that weighs as much as the Great Pyramid every two months for the next 30 years straight. It's going to take the largest investment and in global coordination of human effort that has ever been achieved in human history. And I'm not trying to make you depressed. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to give us all a reality check. This is what's required for the cure. We either pull this off and give ourselves the best chance at survival, or we accept that we may go extinct due to climate change. I'm here today to try and inspire you. I'm here today to catalyze us to get a global movement where we move beyond just making a bunch of climate goals and get a realistic plan in place with the resources we need to get this done. Make no mistake, this is not going to happen fast enough, relying on the market. We are going to have to build a sustainable world way faster than the market will demand. We need resources and urgency like the Manhattan Project. And yes, yes, it's going to be expensive. How expensive? Well, if we use what we have today, if we deployed what we have today, it would cost about $100 trillion. That's the scale of global GDP. That's like the amount of money every country makes in the entire world in a year. And yeah, I know it's scary. It's scary that the cost of the cure might drive us into bankruptcy. But that is what my technology solves. And that's what I'm excited about. What gets me up every morning is the fact that I know I have a technology that can drop the cost of the cure by 10 times. And if you leave here with no, just the, the most important thing I want you to take away today, the reason this matters is because it takes the problem from being something that's inconceivable for us to pay for to something that we can actually afford without changing the price of electricity. My invention can take renewable energy and make it available 24 seven and also as reliable and as cheap as fossil fuels. So how do we do it? Well, we did something very non-intuitive. Instead of storing energy in chemical bonds like a normal battery, where you store energy in the potential energy of atom interactions, instead we store it as heat and the kinetic energy of atom vibrations. And the reason this is so much cheaper is because I don't need special materials with special characteristics. I can basically use dirt or something that comes straight out of the ground like coal. And I don't need a whole bunch of extra processing to turn it into an energy storage medium. With my technology, we take electricity and we power a gigantic light bulb that turns that energy into extremely high temperature heat. We then use liquid metal to move that heat over to a giant stack of carbon blocks that are glowing white hot. And then we hold that energy until whenever we want it back. These blocks are contained inside of an insulated box. And then when we want electricity back, we take the light emitted by those glowing white hot blocks and we let it shine onto the best infrared solar cells we can make, which gives us back electricity. In essence, it's like we make our own miniature sun inside of a box so we can get the light out whenever we want. Now, I'm sure everything I said sounds like science fiction, and that's what most people thought until we proved it worked. I spent the last 10 years proving it out as a professor in my lab at Georgia Tech and MIT. We set a Guinness World Record for pumping the hottest liquid ever. We set another world record for the efficiency of those infrared solar cells. We've proven it works, and we're working on demonstrating it at increasingly larger scales. And even though I'm the inventor of this concept, there's other smart people that are working on other concepts too, so we do not just have one shot on goal. I will have my cure ready in the next couple years, and yeah, there's plenty of folks eager to invest the tens of millions of dollars that it will take for us to do our initial demonstrations. And sure, it'd be nice to get a few hundred million dollars to do the first demonstrations at the utility scale, but that's not even scratching the surface. I'm here today because we need to look ahead to the $10 trillion problem of how do we get energy storage deployed rapidly over the next 30 years. 
This is going to require governments all around the world to invest and coordinate like we've never seen before. And it is possible. We just have to change our priorities because it's not like we don't have the money. Last year, the governments of the world spent $7 trillion on subsidies for oil and gas. I need you to help spread the word so we can spark a movement to redirect those funds to solving the energy storage problem. We got to change how we think and then change how we operate. We got to transition from just making climate goals to realistic, tangible, strategic, properly resourced plans for getting to net zero. So let's stop talking about it and let's get busy doing it. Thank you.